Welcome.
Jesus. Jesus. Sing Amen. Amen. A great light dawns in Galilee. Some say madman, some say king. <laughs> Wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He knew well what it would take to free us all from sin and grace. Perfect man would have to die And only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming Devil you're done, you better start running Good evening, everybody. Welcome. We're going to get started if you all will take your seat. Or, sorry, take your, the spot where your seat is. You don't have to actually sit down. <laughs> um, so welcome to our worship night. Um, I want to go over a couple things for you, a couple ground rules. Um, no eating, no drinking. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I just want to talk with you guys a little bit about what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, and kind of the order in which we're doing it. So. Uh, tonight is our worship night, and our theme for tonight is going to be the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Christ, and celebrating the accomplishment of Christ. Um, and so um, we have it in three parts. And so if you guys, we're going we're to sing some Christmas songs in the beginning. Hopefully that doesn't weird you out to sing those in August. Um, but if you're wondering why we do this, um, we're not doing this, to be really clear, to stir up some sort of emotional response, okay? Worship is not supposed to be this thing that we do, okay, we got to worship, and then I try, I try to feel something. That's not why we worship. We sing to the Lord because he is good, because he deserves all the glory and honor and praise. And when we are talking through these themes, sometimes, especially as I was, um, as I was preparing this, in my mind I thought, um, man, this might be a little dramatic of a way to, to do a worship night. But then I thought, well, why do I have that feeling that that's a wrong thing? Because when you look at the accomplishment of Christ, when you look at what he did, it is the most incredible, magnificent love story that the world has ever known. And so we get to celebrate that, and that is our reality, because that's, that's still the reality today. So we get to celebrate that together. So as we worship tonight, I will invite you guys to stand now. Um, let's worship our Lord and our King who came down. He became our brother in humanity. He died. He took the death that we deserved. He paid the debt that we could not afford, and he was raised to life by the Father, raising us along with him, all of us who have placed our faith in him. Amen. Let's pray together, and let's worship him. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that we have the honor and privilege to sing to you, to sing truth about who you are and what you've done and the reality of the world that we live in, um, your world that you have created with your own hands, and you own every single speck of dust, every big and small thing, Lord, you own and you are in control of all events. So, Lord, thank you that we have relationship with you, that we can come before you and give you praise and honor. Um, Lord, I ask that you would refine our hearts as we look to you and sing to you. Lord, help us to uh, just point our lives in the direction of your kingdom and your glory and, and um, let everything else be your purview and what you take care of, Lord. Let us be focused solely on your kingdom and your glory and giving you uh, your due. Lord, we thank you that you've brought us here tonight. We thank you um, that we have a place to sing to you. Um, Lord, we pray for those who do not in other countries and facing persecution left and right. But Lord, let us sing with them tonight as we worship you. And Lord, we just ask as we look um, at the life of your son that we would 
uh, just be humbled at um, both his humility and both uh, the radical act of love that was his life, his death, and his resurrection. Um, and Lord, uh, I just thank you again for all of, all of these people who came to worship tonight. We just pray that uh, you would be honored and that you would uh, bless us now as we sing to you. In your name, amen.
I'm going to invite you up now to uh, read our second scripture as we move on to uh, the death of Christ. Yay! Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's continue to sing.
thank you for your body that was broken. Thank you for your blood that was spilled. Lord, you wiped our sin away, and we are now white as snow because of your sacrifice. Like that song says, Lord, not of good that I have done. There's nothing that we could have done to pay the price that we owed, to pay the debt that we owed because of our sin. But Lord, you took our place and you paid the debt so that we may have a right relationship with you, that we may talk with you, that we may commune with you, that we may have a close relationship with our God and our creator and our king and our savior. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you that we don't have to pay that debt, Lord. Thank you that we can stand as redeemed people that you have redeemed for yourself. And one day we can walk alongside you for all of eternity. So we thank you for that, Lord. And we just ask as we continue on our night that you um, just remind us, Lord, of your sacrifice. Remind us of what you accomplished on the cross. As we move into this next section of looking at the resurrection and the new life that we have because of your resurrection, uh, we just ask that you keep our eyes, our hearts and minds focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. That's Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. Word of God says, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. And that is our reality. We have salvation through our Lord. So let's continue to sing together.
All right, I'm going to invite you all who are still standing to uh, take a seat really quick. Um, and uh, ushers, if you would um, start passing out the elements, <laughs> we're about to um, go into a time of communion. Um, and as we do, I just want us to reflect on what we just sang, the words to the songs that we just sang. We just sang that our Lord came down and became like us as man without sin, and then he lived a perfect life. He died the death that we can't even imagine the pain of crucifixion, but not only that, more so the weight of all of our own sin. And then he was resurrected from the grave, and we have a new life because of him. We have been brought from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son because of his life, his death, and his resurrection. So uh, I'm gonna, we're going to play one song, and um, then we're going to take communion. So just take this time to prepare your hearts. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence that our soul? What comes apart from his command And what will keep us to the end The love of Christ in which we stand
You'll notice we had to improvise a little bit with the crackers. So if you have an onion or garlic allergy, you may want to <laughs> just. Uh, uh, but we do uh, celebrate an open communion table at our church, uh, meaning that if you are a believer in Jesus, uh, you can participate. And we encourage people to do that. Um, however, if you're not, it's OK to not participate. Uh, but we'd love to talk to you more about why we celebrate this, uh, this Lord's uh, Supper. Um, Let's read from uh, 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord that I, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gracious, merciful, heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. We praise you for Jesus whose story did not start at his birth, but was there with you, the Father, at creation, who was present at the Passover as the Passover lamb 1,500 years before the event of the Last Supper, Lord. And we just praise you for that, his eternity with the Father as part of the Holy Trinity, Lord. And we just are so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful for the cross. It was necessary so that we could be reconciled to you. We were born with a wall of hostility into sin, Lord, and uh, born separated from you. And only by the power of the cross and, and Jesus' sacrifice can we be reconciled to you, Lord. And we just praise you for that. And we praise you for your resurrection that would occur three days after the crucifixion, as prophesied and necessary to seal our salvation and our ultimate glorification, Lord. And we just praise you tonight as we continue in worship, Lord. We just lift our voices in honor to you because you are worthy, Lord, and we are nothing without you and fully dependent on you, Lord. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. I'm going to invite you all to stand one last time. We're going to close out by singing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. On that note, I want to thank you guys all for joining us tonight. Uh, this has been wonderful. Uh, we do have ice cream in the back, so you're welcome to uh, eat to your heart's desire um, or until you throw up, either one. Um, thank you guys all for being here. I'm going to pray as we close. Dear Lord, we thank you for this night that you've given us. We thank you for our church family that we can come and worship with and have communion with. Lord, we thank you for just a night of remembering um, again, just as, as, what, as what Jeff said, uh, Lord, you are the God who was and is and is to come, and yet you came and you died for us, Lord. And um, we are so, so uh, thankful for all that you have done for us, Lord. Help us now to go out into the world and live lives of thankfulness, live lives surrendered to you as our Lord and our King. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
breathed his last and bowed his head, the Son of God and man was dead. With bloody hands, tears on their face, they laid him down inside that grave. But that wasn't the end.